Okay, I just wanted to make a short video offering up some tips and learnings that I had from recently replacing my coil springs in a 1968 Ford Mustang. Um, I've really appreciated all the information that others have posted online and it really helped me a lot in my project, but there were also aspects that I encountered on my project that nobody had spoken to, spoken about, at least in the videos I looked at. So I just wanted to speak to it for someone who's maybe in the same situation as me, is non-expert, non doing it for the first time and wrestling with the challenge. Um, I'll say up front, I'm not a mechanic. I'm, I'm just sharing what I ex experienced and learned in doing this job myself. So take it for what it's worth, either as a lesson of what not to do or as a potential tip of an approach or solution that might work for you. Now the first thing, um, this is the the coil removal tool and you can see it down there so there's hooks that go at the bottom hooks that go at the top if you're removing the existing coil spring you'll you'll see the limitations on how far up you can put it and how far down where it's seating on the control arm down here so the the coil would actually be like this inside the shock tower and the first step is to remove the existing one once you go to put the new one in and this is actually my old one that I removed um, you'll see that on the uh, the hooks there's a high and a low so the low obviously goes to the hook that's on the lower part of the coil and because the coil is spiraling this one goes to the higher so you always want to make sure you're seating it correctly that'll help keep the screw in the middle of the coil spring compressor vertical while it's inside the coil um, the next thing I'll say is as you crank the coil spring screw it's going to compress the spring and eventually you're gonna see the bottom of the coil spring, let's see if we can, or the screw, is going to become lower and lower, so more towards the bottom of the coil. Now in the case of this application, I had to compress this coil down to less than 12 inches. And just to give you an idea, this piece of wood is 13 inches. So you can see it, it was getting compressed probably a good four inches. So when it's doing that, eventually this screw comes all the way down through the bottom. So when you go to seat the new coil on top of the control arm, you start to run into a problem where the screw has come too low and you actually can't fit the compressed spring back in because the screw has come down below. The solution to that is to put spacers in. And in this case, and I'll just remove it here, you can use washers, you could use a piece of pipe that fits over the screw. I didn't have those, so I created spacers out of nuts. So these I think are three quarter inch nuts. And you can see it makes a pretty good spacer. And all it's achieving is to sort of hold the screw higher so that as it compresses the spring, the bottom of it will extend less far out the bottom so I don't run into clearance problems with the control arm. The thing you gotta realize though is that each of these spacers is minimizing the distance between these two hooks so you want to sort of have as much max grab on the coil as possible meaning you want to have it as high at the top and as low at the bottom as you can get it to connect and in this particular application I'm thinking it was probably somewhere around these this position here that I could make it work now the main problem I had with my replacement springs was they were longer, longer even than these. So I had to compress those down to 12 inches. And once I put a lot of compression on this, these would start to move the hooks. So I would seat them in the center to start and then they would shift over until they were sort of on one side and then I'd start to get a, a bulge in the, the coil. So it's most compressed down this side and bulged out on this side so it's no longer straight as you can see here but quite distorted and that made it difficult to seat in the shock tower and on the control arm so the solution I came to to minimize that slippage you know because when I set up the screw and the hooks I had it perfectly centered was I put these I cut little rubber strips just to give better grip on the coil between the hook and I would just put them underneath the hook and I made these out of a, a jar opening uh, piece of rubber that my wife uses to open jars so I'm in trouble when she finds out that I've cannibalized the parts here but I just put those under there and then once it's under tension 
it helps prevent it from sliding. But even doing that, it didn't stop it from sliding altogether. So I needed another solution to keep it centered while I was compressing it so much. And the solution I came up for that, which I haven't seen from anybody else, is I put pieces of broom handle down either side of my coil and it was just to hold the hooks in the middle and then I did the same on this side you get the idea and just long enough so that it would fit between the two hooks and it just kept it centered so that by the time I had it under full pressure and before I put it in the shock tower I then removed these pieces of wood and I had a very undistorted coil it had just been evenly compressed on both sides because when these tried to slide they just didn't have the opportunity to do so and that got me close enough so that I could get it installed now I know in some other applications where you're not quite so restricted in terms of access to the coil with the shock tower you probably have better options and then as well in my case where I was going from these um, lowering coils to a full-size coil for a, a big block it was just so much longer and I had to compress it so far that the distortion was a real problem and I had several starts and restarts trying to get it done. Anyway, I hope those ideas are helpful to you and uh, good luck with your uh, car projects. Thanks.